you very much. Uh, when we were sitting and discussing before coming uh, here, uh, I was told it's not a big group, but group of the people who are very knowledge knowledgeable on the issue. So it makes uh, my job more difficult because I'm talking to the people who know what's happening in the Western Balkans, who know about uh, 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 developments in Bosnia and Herzegovina. And but uh, in my remarks, I'll try to update you because yes. Bosnia, in Bosnia and Herzegovina things happen very dynamically and uh, events develop. Uh, so uh, any update uh, could be uh, very good in any case. And uh, I'm really looking forward to the second part of our uh, meeting and uh, dialogue on the Q&A, yes. which is always more interesting than, 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 the, than the part that uh, I'm going to, to tell. But uh, regardless of that, uh, I, I'm not going to read from, from my remarks and try to address uh, the major, major issues of uh, stability in Balkans, uh, path of Bosnia-Herzegovina towards uh, EU and NATO, and where we stand at the current moment and what are the future prospects for moving forward and uh, develop political development in Bosnia-Herzegovina. Uh, let me start by saying that this is election year. Election year in general parliamentary election and presidential election. And always, as you know from your own experience during election year, uh, not many things are uh, possible to achieve, in ref especially regarding the reforms, because ev every politician is very careful how to address the electorate, to in introduce some reforms which could diminish his role. And uh, so uh, we are in such a situation that we need to make re necessary reforms, but uh, the small window of opportunity of uh, 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 we have to complete these reforms is uh, not giving a big prospect that these reforms would be uh, concluded. As uh, uh, we said at the very beginning, our two main strategic goals is to join EU and NATO. Uh, regardless of the political diversity, ethnic diversity uh, baggage that we carry from the past, uh, uh, all political leaders, all political parties, all political factors agree that EU and NATO membership has no alternative. Where we disagree, no political parties, that the way how to achieve there. As you know, internal organization of Bosnia Herzegovina is two entities. One is called Republic Srpska, and the other is Federation of Bosnia Croat. In uh, legal terms, it, it's creating confusion. It's within the state of Bosnia, Herzegovina, you have one republic and one federation. And when you talk about this, it's, it's giving a lot of confusion, but as, as you are knowledgeable, you would know what we are talking about. So, uh, Bosnia, Herzegovina, as such, was created in Dayton in 1995, and I was uh, part of this uh, negotiating team. And under, uh, it, which was negotiated under the very difficult circumstances, three warring sides, and practically uh, Dayton created peace, Dayton stopped the war, but did create a functional country which would be able to perform and execute all necessary reforms on the path to EU and NATO. Practically, what are the major flaws which are reflecting uh, situation in Bosnia and Herzegovina since uh, post war reconstruction, since uh, we, uh, uh, after the war was closed and the uh, NATO forces left and so forth. So, uh, one of the uh, parts of uh, Dayton Peace Accords is the Constitution, of course, which uh, definitely it has a number of blocking mechanism in order to prevent that domination or majorization of one ethnic group or, of, or one entity over one another. So this is one issue. Second issue was uh, that uh, rate of return 
of refugees who were ethnically cleansed, who left the war, from, who left the Bosnia Herzegovina during the war for, for various reasons, uh, didn't uh, happen. And uh, this rate is in the both entity of the range, not larger than 10%, which is creating totally different ethnic picture on the ground, comparing to the picture that we had prior to the war. And as, as you know, when our people vote, they vote ethnically. They always vote Croats for Croats, Serbs for Serbs, Bosnians for Bosnians. And the third element of, of uh, the flaw of the Constitution is discrimination. That uh, all the citizens are not equal to be elected. First of all, for, for the highest office for the presidency, from two points of view. Uh, only Serb can be elected in Republika Srpska to represent in tripartite presidency. And from the Federation, only Bosniak and Croat can be elected. So not Serb can be elected in the Federation, and in the Republika Srpska, Bosniak and Croat cannot be elected. And not to talk about people who do not belong to mm. any of these three, who are from mixed marriages, who consider them as a, as a part, or like... Uh, Jews, Gypsies, Ukrainians, Slovaks that live in this country. So uh, these are issues uh, that brought uh, a lot of problem to, for the fast track for Bosnia-Herzegovina. That's the main reason why Bosnia is lagging behind the countries in the region, which are more of the uh, one ethnic group in Croatia, predominantly Croats, in Serbia, predominantly Croats. Uh, or Serbs, then in Montenegro, also Montenegrin are uh, in the majority. In Bosnia and Herzegovina, we have combination of three, although the percentages are different. But these rules and these constituents, regulations, are preventing uh, functionality of, of uh, Bosnia and Herzegovina in, in a full, full uh, manner. So uh, the problem of decision-making process, which, is, uh, which has so many obstacles uh, because uh, entities try to, be, uh, to act as a state mm. according to the Constitution. So uh, in order to pass the laws on the state and to strengthen the state institution, it's very difficult because of, of that major, major problem is entity voting, which was imposed at the time, which tells that... Uh, a uh, certain number of votes from one entity can block anything which would be on the agenda of the state parliament. Mm -hmm. That means, in uh, practical terms, 22% of the parliament, MPs from the mm -hmm. parliament, can block any decision. So you don't have a real functioning of the, of the parliamentary democracy in the parliament which was supposed to be. So, uh, this issue of discrimination also brought that the Council of Europe and the uh, court in Strasbourg passed a decision that this discriminatory clauses should be changed in our constitution. So before us, it's a very difficult task to achieve more functional state, to change this entity voting, which was proven as an element by many uh, important uh, parliaments, uh, European Parliament, uh, Parliament uh, 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 Council of Europe, US Congress, Venice Commission, all they are focusing on these issues that they are uh, preventing Bosnia and Herzegovina to function normally. But now with uh, before us is this very difficult task. We have to improve our constitution. As I said, time window is very short. Uh, international community, European Union, together with the United States, is trying to create a platform for these things to happen. Or what we are hearing recently, that uh, that would be passed uh, to uh, the new government, which will be formed after the elections. Immediately after the elections, these uh, reforms should start. 
because these are reforms preventing Bosnia and Herzegovina to move uh, further on path to European Union and and uh, uh, NATO. When we are, this is a broader broader picture. But when we are talking a particular path of Bosnia and Herzegovina and uh, immediate smaller goals in the foreign policy, one is. Uh, visa liberalization process. Bosnia and Herzegovina got a roadmap in 2008 with 174 conditions to be fulfilled, which, uh, and, and same went with the other countries from the region, Montenegro, Serbia, uh, Macedonia. And unfortunately, these three countries uh, uh, went further, but Bosnia stayed, stays behind. Uh, not fulfilling all the conditionality. But now, uh, uh, in, in March, uh, not in March, even in February, we fulfilled all the conditions, and now the European Commission is doing evaluation. Experts uh, are coming to evaluate, did we fulfill? Uh, we uh, fulfilled, and uh, the, the main decision was supposed to come by 1st of July that citizens of Bosnia and Herzegovina will have a right of free visa travel within the Schengen system as our immediate neighbors. Uh, but we now see that the politics is uh, interfering more and more from European Union because we have the process taking so much time, procedural matters, that experts of commission have to will be using most of their time. Then you will have the uh, European Parliament will have its own procedures. Uh, European Council will have its procedures. So uh, we might pass this July. And then they, they don't have the meeting of European Parliament before September. So we might be moving to have this visa liberalization after, even after elections, which would be uh, <coughs> very bad for citizens of Bosnia and Herzegovina before, before the summer holidays but also putting uh, in, in a discriminatory position citizens who are not having dual citizenship. For instance, in Bosnia, you have these three major groups. 99% uh, of Croats have also Croatian citizenship. Mm. Uh, Serbs in Bosnia and Herzegovina are acquiring more and more Serbian citizenship. So they would have... Uh, use uh, and uh, enjoy this this uh, right but the citizens who are, who don't have dual citizenship which are mostly bosniaks will not use use this privilege so it's creating another discriminatory so we hope this this story will end by july we are talking with brussels on mm. daily basis that the speed up procedure and uh, end up by time because we did a lot of effort to fulfill mm. this condition second immediate goal of foreign policy is uh, to come closer to NATO. We are now currently in so-called intensified dialogue. And we uh, uh, send our application with the full consensus of all po political parties and the presidency for application for membership action status, which is the last step before uh, full-fledged membership in NATO. Uh, our neighbors, Montenegro, got this in December last year. We were not uh, accepted, but we are working hard to, in the next ministerial summit in Tallinn to uh, get this membership action plan and in order to uh, get closer and uh, in the coming years to become full-fledged member of NATO. Why NATO is so important for Bosnia Herzegovina? Because, uh, as, as you know, uh, the, the conflict from 92, 95, the major uh, horrific crimes, even genocide, happened in Bosnia and Herzegovina. As a part of for dividing the country between Croatia and Serbia, and uh, so uh, the most instability is in Bosnia and Herzegovina because of the disconstituted people and uh, interests of our bigger neighbors, mm -hmm. then, then we are the same. So. Uh, as we approach to NATO or become a full-fledged member of NATO, the factor of stability rises. And being a, a 
full member of NATO, then we fall under NATO umbrella and all possible divisions of the country, all possible obstacles and uh, uh, attempts on the, to go for uh, invading sovereignty and territorial integrity would be off the table. I'm not saying that we are having this now, but in order to prevent and to create stability in the Balkans, in the region, it's important that Bosnia is stable. And one of the major pillars for this stability is membership to NATO. That's why we are working very hard uh, to become a member of NATO. And uh, one of the most successful reforms happening in Bosnia and Herzegovina is defense reform. When uh, we remember when uh, immediately after the war, we had three armies, three ministries of defense, and uh, how can you imagine in this all, all uh, post-war reconstruction this, this developed? That's why we took up very seriously this defense reform. Now, uh, we have single ministry of defense, single army, single uniforms, so that tells that this reform is very, very much advanced, and we qualify to, to membership, membership of NATO. Of course, NATO helped us. They have a headquarters of 150 people down there helping us in defense reform. When we remember when we were 60,000 NATO forces mm -hmm. immediately after the war, uh, that tells us and gives us a, a signal that Bosnia is stable in political terms. It's stable in... Uh, uh, that uh, fighting cannot reoccur that, uh, in that sense stability, but uh, due to the flaws that I was saying in the Constitution, in some provisions of the data courts, we have a problem in, in uh, creating fully functional state which would be making a decision for the central government. Of course, uh, entity uh, are opting to have as much as possible independence from the central government, which is uh, making the central uh, institutions establish uh, not uh, to the full power, which are requested by European Union and NATO, because it's all well known. States enter EU, states enter NATO, not entities and some smaller units. So that's why it's important to create institutions of Bosnia Herzegovina to to, uh, to to very good good function. Another element of uh, stability and putting country country together is uh, our uh, election to the United Nations Security Council. Uh, we were very, very proud that. Uh, we practically graduated from the country where UN Security Council, where we were the subject yes. topic of UN Security Council resolution in this 92 until 95, to become someone, to be a country who will be participating in the major decisions on the security in the world. And why Bosnia Herzegovina is, is, is good that it is in the Security Council? Because all too well we experienced bad decision of Security Council, like lifting, like arms embargo imposed on Bosnia-Herzegovina, which created that uh, uh, we had 250,000 civilians dead. We didn't have the uh, uh, basic right to defend ourselves because of uh, inappropriate decision of Security Council at the very beginning of the war. And we who went through difficult times would have the best sense for incoming crisis, incoming conflicts. And uh, our experience and the uh, uh, own experience is the best recipe for, for uh, moving and uh, pointing to something. We would be able to work more on preventive diplomacy, which is always better than when you act in between or so-called peacekeepers when there's no peace to keep or to act afterwards. Mm. So uh, it's, it's much costly. That's why uh, we see our role as such. And I, and I think this was very well taken by uh, United Nations uh, Secretary General. 
uh, and and the others. Uh, we uh, hope that uh, uh, our cooperation with the United States and uh, Europe will continue in the sense that uh, they will help us in these reforms. But what is for sure that these reforms should be done by us. No one can work. We have to agree. And what we all agree with their assistance and mediation would be, would be very, very helpful. Another very important element, which is also part of the European uh, uh, Union perspective, is good neighborly relations. Uh, as we speak, uh, Bosnia-Herzegovina now has three immediate neighbors, Croatia from west, Serbia, and Montenegro from east. With, this country, with three country immediate neighbors, we are trying to have the best of our relations. That's, uh, that's not yet the case with uh, two of them, uh, because with Serbia we had a number of problems since, uh, like from appointing ambassador, recognizing the genocide, what happens in Bosnia and Herzegovina. But I think uh, with, uh, with continuous diplomatic activities which, are, which is going on, we are moving forward. There's been appointment of the ambassador of Bosnia and Herzegovina in, in Belgrade. There's been this uh, declaration passed in the parliament, uh, as Mr. Brown says, it fell a little bit short. It's not recognizing genocide that occurred and that was clearly stated in the decision of uh, court, uh, International Court of Justice. But nevertheless, uh, we see it's uh, not an easy. We can really be moving forward and working with Serbia. And as you know, or, uh, uh, one of the major problems with the neighbors is borders. Mm. You, uh, there's open question, especially which uh, came after the dissolution of Yugoslavia. Borders between the countries are not uh, defined in every image. So we have open questions, I would call not major issues, but open question with Serbia and with Croatia. And with Montenegro, we solved this issue. We, we just uh, did the demarcation of the border without open issue. Where we have problems and where the problems are between all the countries in the region is on the sea. Because the uh, sea was common sea of former Yugoslavia. So uh, as the borders between the federal republics were there more or less clear, on the sea, they were not clear. That's why we had this dispute between Slovenia and Croatia. There's a dispute for ready for arbitration, but not yet agreed between Croatia and Bosnia and Herzegovina. And there's been dispute between Croatia and Montenegro, this prevalent car. So, uh, but I think we are working together because we want to be a one day member of the same family of. Uh, European family, because we are in Europe, we belong to Europe, and that's uh, where the Bosnian citizens uh, belong and they want to be. And the political leadership is, is for it. We, and coming, uh, why am I here? Why? Uh, uh, it's my first trip to Ireland. I think when we talk of bilateral relations and multilateral relations with Ireland, we are very similar in a number of issues. We are more or less the same size country, territorial and uh, uh, by populations. We are uh, around 4 million. Uh, so, and, and oh, what I find it very similar by temperament and, and uh, when the State to mind. So, uh, and Bosnia Herzegovina in its post conflict era in economic development can learn a lot from Ireland. Can take an example how Ireland was developing very sound economic policy, uh, how the uh, tapping the funds, development funds from uh, uh, European Union, how to use them wisely and, and uh, work and to developing economy and become a uh, Celtic tiger from, from this side. That's why I believe that uh, uh, 
we can broaden our bilateral relations. It's a, it's a matter that we learn more about each other to in, intensify contact and dialogue. Uh, I invited foreign minister to visit Bosnia and Herzegovina. Uh, we had uh, visits from parliamentary delegations. We had visit of Minister of Defense. Uh, your your uh, troops are, I mean, police troops are participating in uh, mission in Bosnia and Herzegovina. Uh, transferring some of the knowledge because the policing is one of the critical issues is also in Northern Ireland that uh, uh, is important to work towards a reconciliation among the people after the terrible co conflict that we have. Uh, one element to the reconciliation, and I'll, I'll stop after that, it's justice. All war criminals must be apprehended and taken to the court in Hague uh, International Court uh, for War Crimes. Uh, two remaining fugitives are still at large. General Ratko Mladic, the one who committed the genocide in Srebrenica, mm. and uh, uh, Goran Hadžić, who, who was dealing with uh, crimes in Slavonia and Croatia. So uh, these, these two, I think, would bring countries closer. As, as this declaration from Serbia is a positive step, Apprehending all remaining uh, war criminals uh, would be a step forward towards reconciliation. Uh, that's why it, it is important to work in the, this direction where tomorrow won't be any borders once we get into the European Union. And we would be thinking differently as one open economic space, one political space, and, and important towards, uh, towards getting a better uh, life for all our citizens. So, and this year, which is significant, as you mentioned rightfully, will be 15 years of genocide, anniversary of 15 years of genocide in Srebrenica. This will be an excellent opportunity, and that all the leaders from the region gather on the commemoration yes. and commemorate this and uh, issue apologies and commit themselves to the future and prosperous work of the region. Yeah. So I'll stop here and uh, looking forward to your questions. Well, thank you. You've uh, covered it.